When you think of a banana plant, where do you see it growing? Probably somewhere tropical, sunny, nice and warm. I bet you don't think. Iceland. <laughs> Here it is barren, it's cold, and at certain times during the year it's nearly always dark. Yet the strange truth is that Iceland is home to one of Europe's biggest banana plantations. How is that possible? Come along, come along. Right, so we're about to meet Giddy who is one of the horticulturalists, one of the gardeners here at the Banana Flam. Hello. Hi, Gary. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice. Can we come in out of the rain? <laughs> come on in, gang. Come in. It's just nice and warm in here. It is. I'm Maddy. So <laughs> nice to meet Hi. you. Hey. Sorry. Wow. This does not feel like Iceland. So welcome to tropical Iceland. Thank you so much. Can we get some of this gear off oh, yeah, and yeah, see some bananas? Put it here. We have four different varieties of bananas in here. The big ones that we can see here, they, they are actually called ice blue. And you can see the blue tinge on the unripe bananas. Then we have uh, two small bananas. These are uh, the, the short uh, plants here. It's a Cavendish dwarf banana. Mm -hmm. So it's from this Cavendish group of bananas, which is the banana that is grown for export. Yeah, so we have Cavendish bananas in the UK. Yeah. So these are like our bananas, but small, little yeah, ones. Yeah. So maybe that actually kind of brings me to my first question, which is, what is a banana plant? Because it's not a tree. No. So what is this? It's actually uh, a monocot. A so monocot. it's related to grasses and tulips and, and, and palm trees and all that. So it's closer to a grass than it is any type of tree. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So actually, like, what yeah. parts of the plant are we seeing right here? So we are seeing just one stem. So the root system is actually perennial. Oh, so their roots are all connected. Yes. Right. So these are almost like three separate blades of, of grass. Yeah. Ah, OK. Three stems right. from the same plant. There are lots of different types of banana plants. Some, like this one, can grow to be up to 10 metres tall. Some are much shorter. But they all have absolutely enormous leaves, like this one, which is even bigger than me. This stem will only grow one bunch of bananas. Yes. When that bunch of bananas is ripe, the rest of the stem will just die off. Yeah. But the root system will keep on producing new, new stems. Like yeah. this one. Like the small one over there. And it will take a year and a half until this one has the size and has made a banana cluster. So every time we eat a banana at home, that yeah. has come from a plant that is probably about a year and a half old. Yeah. So that is how a banana is growing. Incredible. Let's go mm -hmm. see some more bananas. OK, this plant is doing a really good job of showing us how they grow. So bananas grow in bunches that are actually called hands. So every single banana is called, you guessed it, it's a finger. But they start off as flowers. So a banana plant has two flowers. It has this larger purple one. This is the male flower. Then all of these little yellow ones are the female flowers. And these are what become the bananas that we eat. But at first, they point downwards, and as they grow and get bigger, they slowly curl upwards, and the flower dries up, falls off, and then eventually, if they're left on the plant, they will ripen and turn yellow, ready for us to eat them. So if bananas love warm, sort of humid conditions, how is it that you're recreating that here in Iceland? We have geothermal energy that comes straight from the ground. So this is heat from the it's ground? It's heat from the ground, yeah. and it goes into these really, really warm pipes. OK. And then we build the greenhouse. Yeah put the pipes into the greenhouse to heat, keep it warm and nice, yeah. and then we can grow bananas. So this is a banana radiator. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Yeah, 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 you could say that. Yeah. It's so It's really warm. So hot. Yeah. And is that because the, the water is coming out of the ground at that temperature? Yeah, this is actually steam that goes into the ground because the wow. temperature is uh, 120 degrees. So it's not water, it's steam. But what is geothermal energy? Well, it's heat that comes from the ground, and the ground in Iceland is alive. In some areas, magma bubbles up from the middle of the earth, and this magma heats natural water that has trickled into the ground. And when that water gets so hot, it bubbles back up to the surface, 
And we can see some of that hot water just here. This is the result of a hot spring. But the best thing is that this hot water can be used. It provides Icelandic people hot water. It also heats their homes and buildings, including greenhouses. So pipes will carry hot water from hot springs to the greenhouses where it can then go on to warm the banana radiators. Wow. So that's how you're doing it. So it's thanks to the geothermal energy mm -hmm. under the ground in Iceland that you're mm -hmm. able to heat your greenhouses. That's so cool. <laughs> or hot. Oh, really? really? <laughs> It's hard to explain just how hot the banana radiators are, but I can show you. So I'm using a thermal imaging camera right now, which will show you how hot and cold things are. And you can see that the radiators are bright yellow and white. And that means they are very, very hot compared to the rest of their surroundings. Oh my gosh. There's even, they're even in the, in the, in the top of the greenhouse. I hadn't even noticed those earlier. Look, there's even heat running through the top as well. Huh. No wonder it's boiling in here. <laughs> So Gilly actually saved these from the students that do a lot of the training. Yeah. Um, so thank you for saving them. So we actually get to try one. Oh yes, definitely. Right. So the best ones are those that are slightly freckled. So I would say this one. You know what? Would be I love absolutely that. Brilliant. Like at home, I would see that and say it's got yeah. brown spots. Yeah. But you describe them as freckles, and it makes it <laughs> seem so much nicer. <laughs> so, I think. I, think I have to warn you though. When you've tasted the banana that actually has ripened on the plant, yeah. you never want the store-bought bananas again. Well, because that's the truth, isn't it? Normally, yeah. when we buy a banana from the shop, mm -hmm. they're taken off the plant before it's fully ripe, and then mm -hmm. it ripens in our fruit bowls or maybe mm -hmm. in a supermarket, and it doesn't taste the same. Yeah. So It's so much better I know. when it ripens on the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a banana sweet, and how banana sweets don't taste anything like actual bananas at home. This does. This actually <laughs> tastes like banana. That's so good. It's really, it's brilliant, actually. That's so tasty. Mm-hmm. Mmm. I'm all for greenhouse, growing bananas in greenhouses, <laughs> just so you can eat them off the plant, like yeah. that nice, like perfectly ripe. Oh, they're so mm. brilliant. Mm-hmm. Really sweet. Have one for the road. Thank you so much. You should yeah. get some for the crew as well. This one? Would you like one? Would you like one? That's a good freckly one. Here you go. You can have that one there. Lovely. This one is starting to freckle. Would you like one bit. as well? Ready? Ready? Actually, no, I don't want to throw it. I'll come pass it over to you. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Kiri's given us more bananas. Thank you so much to her for showing us around today. It's been absolutely fascinating. I hope you've enjoyed it just as much as we have. Please do stick around for more Icelandic adventures. Stay curious and I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>